Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about inverse trig functions. So in my previous video, um, we talked about uh, SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, and tangent, and how we can um, use SOHCAHTOA if we've been given an angle, given one side, and they want to know another side. Okay, that's when we're going to, and of course, it's got to be a right triangle. Um, so that's when we're going to use SOHCAHTOA. Now this video is on something where we're using SOHCAHTOA, but a little different. Okay, this is the inverse trig functions. Now before we go into any detail, I want you to notice this warning right here. Calculator must be in degree mode. Now I gave a whole speech about this in the last video and just in case you didn't watch that one um, or you already feel comfortable with SOHCAHTOA and you just want to learn about inverse, um, if you do not have your calculator in degree mode, your answer 100% of the time will be wrong. Okay, um, so it does not get more clear than that. You can do all the work right, but your answer will be wrong. So let's talk about how we put our calculator in degree mode. Okay, so I'm gonna bring, I've just cleared my calculator, so it is not in any particular mode. All you do is hit the on button, okay? And you wanna go up here to mode. We're gonna put it in degree mode, so hit mode. And go down to this third option and you'll notice how radian is currently highlighted. We need it in degree. So you just move one to the right over. So that's flashing and hit enter. So now degree mode is selected. Now from here, you can just second mode back to the home screen and now your calculator is in degree mode. It's important to note if you were to clear your calculator for some reason, it will go back in the original radian um, mode. So you must, if you ever clear it or anytime you start a test, that is the first thing you need to do. So now that I've given my speech about the calculator, let's get into inverse trig functions. So we're going to use the inverse of SOHCAHTOA. When we have been given two sides and we have a missing angle, so that's the big waving red flag, okay? When you have a missing angle of a right triangle. So it says when given two sides and a missing angle of a right triangle, use inverse SOHCAHTOA, okay? So the big difference is with regular SOHCAHTOA, we're looking for a missing side. Okay, with inverse SOHCAHTOA, we're, list, we're looking for a missing angle. So big, big difference there. Given two sides, missing angle of a right triangle. Now I'm just gonna briefly summarize this. The same little chart was in my last video where we really talked about it in depth. This video, I'm just gonna refresh um, that we have three different trig functions we're gonna look at. Sine, I know it looks like sin, but it's pronounced sine. Sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's where the so in SOHCAHTOA comes from. Okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's our K of SOHCAHTOA. Okay, so this should be opposite over adjacent. Sorry. So when I've got tan equals opposite over adjacent, that's the TOA. Tan equals opposite over adjacent. When in reviewing the placement of these, remember this is a theta symbol. It's just kind of like a placeholder right this second for the um, my sketch that I did. So it's kind of like if we're standing here, right, theta. And in this case, theta is going to be the angle that we're, that we're looking for. Whatever is opposite wherever you're standing, okay? So the angle in question, in this case right here, whatever is opposite that, we label that opposite, okay? Whatever is opposite the right angle, the 90 degree square little box angle, that is the hypotenuse. And then whatever is left, in reality it's the um, side that touches the angle but that isn't the hypotenuse. Um, you know, I like to think of it as what's left once we do opposite and hypotenuse 
is our adjacent side. Um, so we would label that ADJ or adjacent. Okay, so if you want a more detailed explanation on that, please check out my um, trig function SOHCAHTOA video. All right, but this one we're just going to focus on inverses. So looking at our first example, we've got triangle A, B, C here. Okay, I know AB, this side, is 12, and I know BC, this side, is 20. They're asking me to find the measure of angle C. That's what this little M um, angle C, it's measure of angle C. So I want to know this angle right here. That's my angle in question. Okay, now you may you have some teachers that are going to put an X there. You have some teachers that may put a theta symbol there to show you that that's what you're looking for. Um, I just usually do like a little arc. I'm showing that's where I'm standing. Okay, that's what I want to know. So let me see what I've been given. Well, if I look straight across, if I was standing there and I look straight across, I see 12. That's my opposite. It is opposite my angle in question. So I label it OPP. Okay, now when I look at what else they gave me, 20, that is opposite my little 90 degree angle. So the one opposite the 90 degree angle, that's my hypotenuse. And I think it really helps, especially when you're learning this for the first time, to label. Label what you've been given. So in this case, opposite and hypotenuse. Now, you may be thinking, well, why aren't you labeling this down here? This is the adjacent. Okay, it is. This is the adjacent. But notice how they didn't tell me what the adjacent was. And they're not wanting me to find the adjacent. They didn't ask me to find the adjacent. Okay, so that is not helpful to me. I'm not going to use adjacent at all. So I want to look at which trig function uses opposite and hypotenuse. Sine, opposite over hypotenuse. So what we're going to do is we're going to say sine of angle C. Okay, so we're just going to call it C. We're going to put C degrees, and I want to know what is C, okay? Is equals opposite over hypotenuse. So let's see, opposite is 12, hypotenuse is 20. So 12 over 20. Okay, so any time it is the angle that is missing. So notice I'm missing this part right here. Okay, we're going to do something called the inverse. And this is sine, the way we're going to show inverse is we're going to say negative 1. This looks complicated, I promise you it is not. Sine of negative one is 12, this, over 20, okay? And we are gonna put this in the calculator, and we gotta do it in a very specific way, so let me show you how we do it. We bring our calculator over, we make sure it's in degree mode, and mine is, Okay, and we want that, and if you notice right above the sign in blue, it says sine of negative one. Okay, that's that inverse. It's that written right there. So we want that function. So I need to hit second, because that'll bring up all the blue options. It's inverse sign. And notice how it pulls up sine of negative one, just like what I have. And in the parentheses, we're just going to put 12 over 20. 12 divided by 20. And I always like to close the parenthesis out. All right, enter, and I get 38.87. Let's round to the nearest hundredth. It didn't tell us how to round, so I just usually go with the hundredth if I'm not sure. So we know what the measure of angle C is. It is 36. We can write measure of angle C is 36.87. 8, 7 degrees, and don't forget it's an angle, so we do want to label it degrees. That is the measure of angle C, okay? That really wasn't that hard, right? You just had to recognize we need the negative 1, and you bring straight down what we labeled, in this case, opposite and hypotenuse. It's really just, just a, a two-step problem, writing it out and putting it in the calculator. That's pretty much it.
Okay, let's look at another example. So this one says DEF, triangle DEF. They want us to find the measure of angle E. So this time I want to know this angle. And I usually just mark it with a little arc. Now, if I look straight across, I would have my opposite down here. But notice they didn't give me an opposite. And that's not what I'm looking for, so really that's not helpful to me. I can label it opposite if I want, but I really don't need to. Let's look at what they have given me. They've given me um, the uh, hypotenuse, right? The one opposite the little box, my 90 degree angle, right? And they've told me my hypotenuse is 30. So I'm going to label it HYP for hypotenuse. And if this is the hypotenuse and this is the opposite... Well, that only leaves the adjacent, right? It's the one touching the arc that's not the hypotenuse. Either way you want to think about it. A, D, J, that's our adjacent, is 17. So if I wanted to know the measure of angle E, I know I've got to use an inverse. Okay, but which one? So which of my trig functions uses adjacent and hypotenuse? Only one of them does. Right, and hopefully you're looking right here at cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to do cosine of, we want to know angle E, so we'll just call it E degrees, right, is adjacent 17 over hypotenuse 30. So when you recognize that it is the angle that is missing, that's when we need to take this step. We need to say cosine of negative 1. That is inverse cosine. That's what that means. And in our parentheses, we're just going to bring this straight down. 17 over 30. Now let's just put that in the calculator. So we want the little blue cosine of negative 1 right above our cosine button. So I'm going to hit second cosine. And we're going to put in parentheses 17 divided by 30. End parentheses. And that gives us 55.48. We'll round to the nearest hundredth again. 55. Um, 0.48, right? So let's bring it up here. So measure of angle, or bring it down here, I should say. Measure of angle E equals 55.48 degrees. Okay, remember it's an angle, so we measure angles in degrees. Okay, let's look at one more example together. They're asking me to find the measure of angle I, which will be right here. So I'm going to mark it with a little arc. Now let's look at what I've been given. I know I've been given the one directly across. So we're going to call this our opposite. And I know I've been given the one directly across from the right angle. So we would call this our hypotenuse. Okay, so which one of these uses opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that would have to be sine, right? So we have a sine of I. Now, I don't know what I is, so I'm just going to call it I degrees, right? Equals opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, 10 over 40. Right? Now when it's this that's missing, when the angle is missing, then that's when we bring down our sine of negative 1. And we're just going to bring this straight down in our parentheses, 10 over 40. Okay, so let's bring out our calculator. We're going to hit second sine. That gives us that inverse, 10 divided by 40. Let's see what we get. We get um, the measure of angle I is 14.48. OK, 
going to look at just a couple more examples. They will sometimes ask you for, they'll say sine of x equals 10 over 15, and then they'll say find x. Okay, remember, if it's this angle that's missing, all we need to do is say sine of um, negative 1, so sine to the negative 1, and then in our parentheses, we put this, whatever this is. So in this case, 10 over 15, right? And then we just use our calculator. So we make sure we're in degree mode. And then I do second sign, 10 divided by 15, close out your parentheses, and we get 41.81 as our answer. Same thing here. So this time they're saying cosine of x degrees equals 0.65. Now you might be saying, well, that's not a fraction this time. That's okay, right? We just put in exactly what they give us. So remember, if it's a missing x here, missing angle, we say cosine of negative 1. And in our parentheses, we're just going to put 0.65. Okay, so let's see what that one would be. Second cosine of 0.65. Close your parenthesis out. 49.46. So here we go. X is 49.46 degrees. That would be the X in this case. Let's do one more of these together. So tan of x degrees equals 2 over 3. Works the exact same way. I'm just, instead of writing sine or cosine, I'm going to write tan. So tan of negative 1 is, and we're going to put 2 over 3. This is our inverse. So we're just going to put it right in the calculator. Second tan, 2 divided by 3. Close it out. 33.69, so x equals 33.69 degrees. All right, now I want you guys to try one on your own. Um, this is an inverse trig function question. Um, so notice they want you to find the measure of angle A. So that means we're gonna be standing here right and you need to analyze what have they given me in what placement and that'll tell you what trig function to use and then you of course want to use your inverse so i will post the answer in the video description below this has been miss smith's math tutorials